Hello and welcome to the special broadcast on day two of the Auto Expo. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The biggest crowds today are at the Maruti Pavilion here at the Auto Expo. And that's because the company has launched the five-door off-roader, the chimney and the compact SUV, the Franks. These two SUVs will be in the price range of approximately 8 to 10 lakhs as a starting price. The official price has not yet been announced. But why are these two SUVs so important for Maruti Suzuki? Let's find out. Behind me is the Jimny, the five-door Jimny, which is a lifestyle off-roader with 4x4 capability with the front seats which can recline completely, intuitive knobs with muscle memory, uh, washer headlamps and this is based on a ladder frame chassis. The company is hoping that uh, this can compete strongly with the Thar and Maruti can capture uh, a good share in the lifestyle off-roader segment with this Jimny. This is already available in several countries worldwide. It will be locally manufactured in uh, India and also exported. In fact, it continues to be exported from India. And on this side, you have the Franx, which has been launched. This is a compact SUV, which has been launched by Maruti Suzuki. And this will take on the likes of uh, the Kia Sonnet and uh, the Hyundai Venue as well. So Maruti is hoping that with these two vehicles, they can capture a good share of the SUV market. The SUV space in India is growing very, very fast. And we understand that we need more and more appealing products for the young and vibrant Indian consumers. And today, uh, we launched the two new SUVs, which is important for Maruti Suzuki in India. Uh, that is Bronx and this Jimny uh, in five-door avatar. And those you know, two new models, I'm sure that, that will have a very strong appeal to uh, Indian young consumers. So give me a sense of how many uh, products or how many units of the Jimny have already been sold worldwide. Uh, worldwide, uh, I think more than 3 million cars uh, sold uh, in the history of Jimny. So Jimny is uh, like a legendary product in the real four-wheel drive you know, uh, segment. Uh, this is uh, like uh, only one product which you can go everywhere at any time. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you about your current market share in SUVs in India and how much do you hope to increase it to by the end of 2023? Because our portfolio was not so strong, so we are struggling in SUV space with very low market share, uh, less than the 15 percent. But now we are so, uh, gradually, you know, uh, moving upward because of the uh, full, you know, model change of uh, Brezza last year and also addition of uh, totally new Grand Vitara uh, last year. So uh, we are climbing up over 15 percent market share in SUV space uh, month by month. Mr. Toshiro Suzuki, the president of Suzuki Motor Company, said India could soon become the leading manufacturer of passenger cars. Uh, what do you think will India need to do in terms of policy to give a conducive environment to the industry to reach that level? The, I think uh, in India, we have basically everything already we have in our hand. The whole market is growing and one of the best market in the world that we can foresee, we can expect the big growth. And also India can become a hub for manufacturing for the export also. And uh, nowadays, the technology makes it possible for us to do the good quality products anywhere in the world. So India is not the exception. So in India, we can make very high quality products and for Indian home market as well as for the export. Do you feel that the growth this year in the coming fiscal will be challenging, sir? Now for us, the uh, demand is still very strong. We have uh, very big back orders right now, and uh, at the same time, our incoming orders are almost a par to our production capacity. So for us, the still demand is very, very strong. Also grabbing a lot of eyeballs at the Auto Expo is Tata Motors. They showcase not just the Avinia, which will launch in 2025, but also the Harrier EV and the Sierra EV for the first time. All these electric vehicles and a set of passenger cars will launch in the next two to three years. We caught up with Shailesh Chandra, the managing director of the passenger vehicle and electric vehicle mobility unit in Tata Motors and the executive director of the commercial vehicle unit, Girish Wag. Listen in. 
Uh, Mr. Chandrasekharan, very strong show by uh, Tata Motors here at the Auto Expo. 26 products unveiled across segments. Give us a sense, what does this show about Tata Motors' growth roadmap? Today, you're a strong number three, growing in a robust manner. How do you see growth from here? I think uh, both in um, commercial vehicles and passenger cars, uh, we are driving towards uh, new mobility mm -hmm. and we are investing in a number of technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, you have seen us uh, launch a number of electric vehicle um, passenger cars and also you are seeing the same thing in commercial vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, you got to see what we are doing in the fuel cells mm -hmm. and uh, hydrogen uh, powered uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, we are looking at urban mobility as well as uh, long distance trucking mm. as far as the commercial vehicle is concerned. As far as the um, passenger car is concerned, I think we are investing both in ICE technology as well as in um, electric vehicles. See, we had a uh, lot of product gaps which we have been trying to uh, address. So it's a question of uh, focusing on safety, it's a question of uh, Taking a bet on electric mobility, that's a bet we took in uh, uh, 2018, late 18 and 19. And since then, um, we have only doubled and tripled our efforts. Mm. So uh, we are committed. Mm. We are also wanting to create cars which are very desirable for the consumer. Mm. Um, we have to work on both affordability and on uh, driving pleasure. Um, and on technology. On technology is something that will continue to invest. So electric vehicles, how uh, you have come up with a 10, a SEP 10, 10 lakh electric vehicle car. How will you continue focusing on bringing down costs and any challenges to electric mobility that you see in the country, which uh, probably need to be done away with? I think we need to do all ranges. It's not only about uh, a price range at uh, 10 lakhs. Mm. We also have to have higher end models because customers have different choices. There are different segments of customers. So <clears throat> we need to continue to uh, uh, work on uh, batteries, continue to work on uh, uh, new technologies. Currently we are with uh, lithium ion and we need to look at other technologies as well. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, working with, uh, let me put it this way, startups and other innovators. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this space will evolve. Mm -hmm. It's uh, too difficult to say exactly um, at what time frame and uh, when we will be launching uh, different technologies, but we'll continue to evolve. Does uh, Tata Motors have a clear path to the number one position in the market? I mean, we don't uh, talk about uh, position and market share. Our job now, we have a long way to go. Our job is now to um, continue to produce vehicles um, which are appreciated by customers mm. and uh, adopted by customers. Any so view? We've got, we got a long way to go. All right. So just one final comment on Air India. An unfortunate incident. You've already taken action. Anything that you'd like to tell us? No, I've already uh, said that uh, as a company and as a group, um, we uh, fell short um, in responding to that situation. So we are committed to making um, steps uh, whether it is in terms of processes, in terms of uh, other systems and uh, that we need to correct so that we can handle the situations much better and more importantly uh, we can uh, ensure that the customers feel uh, delighted to be with uh, our airlines. Give us a sense of uh, the the growth that you have seen in uh, in this fiscal so far, and how do you expect to close FY23? So this fiscal has been very strong, and I would say that uh, it's been very interesting fiscal, and even calendar year also. If you see the last calendar year, the first half or first quarter of uh, this financial year was supply constrained, and then you started seeing the easing of supplies, industry started supplying one million vehicles to the market. And therefore, a lot of pent-up demand which was there has got released. This financial year, just like the calendar year 22, is going to hit about 3.8 million units. 
as compared to last financial year which was at 3 3.1 it's a massive growth 25% coming because of the secular growth that in any case pv industry was seeing but also because of say 3 lakh to 4 lakh of pent up which was in the system which has got released uh, so far what we see the trend in the market that bookings are sustaining at certain levels of course it is more for you know certain popular cars and uh, for rest of the cars the regular cars the supply is more than demand so given the significant growth that we are going to see this year in this financial year the base is going to be big and therefore next year i would expect that it it will be just a single digit growth as compared to say 25% growth that we are going to see this financial year so you're saying that uh, the, the the growth is going to temper taper down for the industry in fy24 in terms of growth rate of course the size will attain you know if it is 3.8 it will be 4 4.1 million is what i expect but the 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 pace will slow pace down will slow. because this pent up demand will also come down slowly exactly the pent up demand has got released now it will be absolutely on the fundamentals of the factors which are driving the you know consumption and uh, sales of our cars these are five or six trucks that are parked here give us a sense of each of them and what they offer so what we have here is uh, the prima 55 ton tractor with hydrogen uh, fueled internal combustion engine so as i said hydrogen is is a good possibility a very exciting possibility in uh, in commercial vehicles and for long haul heavy duty where battery electric may not do the work i think hydrogen is is an option within that i think so we have developed this concept wherein you can also use the current intellectual property and infrastructure of internal combustion engines to a great extent so hydrogen on ice hydrogen on ice so you know i think globally there is also talk of just transition mm. so hydrogen ice in a manner of speaking actually helps right. uh, towards that right and this is the prima so, e55s so this is uh, the prima with fuel cell mm. so we have both the options mm. the fuel cell as well as the hydrogen internal combustion engine uh, here mm. and then on this side we have the battery electric okay so even this is pure ev this is pure battery electric so even in uh, heavy duty vehicles mm. for uh, closed loop application say like tipping or mm. construction mm. you know for mining and construction this will be a battery electric tipper mm. uh, even in buses we have uh, two buses mm. uh, one is a battery electric bus on the left hand side mm. and on the right hand side is a, a fuel cell electric bus Cummins is all set to manufacture fuel agnostic engines for Tata Motors here in India. My colleague Danish Anand caught up with Ashwath Ram, Cummins India's managing director, for a perspective on how the company is increasing its footprint in India. We are displaying here after nearly four years, and we have many incredible products that we are showcasing over here. The most important. thing that we are trying to demonstrate here is our journey towards a zero carbon environment india has committed to be a zero carbon nation by 2070 cummins has committed to be a zero carbon company by 2050 and with that in mind all the technologies are being progressed to be able to reach that goal at the auto expo we are showcasing hydrogen internal combustion engines we are showcasing electrolyzers we are showcasing our fuel agnostic platform we are showcasing hydrogen fuel cells and battery electric packs and systems that we have developed so how is the current demand like and are you adding are there more companies that are approaching you uh, to take all these future te te technologies from you yeah so the indian commercial vehicle market has been in a bit of a recession which started in 2019 and then 2020 and 2021 were impacted by covid so 22 was the first year we started to slowly recover out of the recession and we expect 23 and a few years going forward to be pretty strong for this uh, market we also think india is at an inflection point like what we saw in china between 1995 and 2010 they had, where they had 10 or 15 years of clear solid growth we expect that if we continue to build infrastructure the way we are planning to in india we should see similar kind of growth in india as well
Indian electric passenger car startup is all set to commercially roll out its first electric SUV later this year. At the Auto Expo, they have showcased this electric vehicle which they have developed for the armed forces. We're going to leave you with these pictures as we take a break, but don't go anywhere. Lots more coming up from our uh, special coverage of the Auto Expo. Watch industry leaders discuss the increasing concerns about non-compliance of standards and financial reporting and accountability by the boards of directors and management of companies, followed by the highlights from ICSI National Awards for Excellence in Corporate Governance 2022 on ICSI Presents. Welcome back. You're watching our special broadcast from Auto Expo in Greater Noida. Luxury car maker Lexus has unveiled its range of electric and hybrid vehicles here at the Auto Expo, including the futuristic LF30, a vehicle that can go from 0 to 100 in just 3.8 seconds and has a top speed of 200 kilometers per hour. My colleague Danish Anand caught up with the company's president, Naveen Soni, on Lexus India Plan's product lineup and the importance of India as a market for Lexus in Asia Pacific. products is concerned since we have uh, already defined a global direction that we will be moving towards uh, all electric uh, battery electric future by 2035 so towards that uh, we are uh, presenting two concept cars uh, which are on display the LFZ and the LFZ LC30 which is uh, available for uh, consumers understanding in addition to that we also have the LX 500d uh, which we had uh, brought in a few you sample you know it's uh, not sample units a trial uh, a few cars that were given to us from uh, Japan and those vehicles are also on display so post covid we saw that a lot of demand for luxury cars suddenly shot up so how has it been for you and uh, going down further when do you feel like till what point of time this demand will sustain I think uh, what you said is right, uh, the ingredients of the demand we have to understand. The mindset that has been changed uh, as far as the consumer is concerned is that now that the consumers are willing to experiment, the consumers are willing to express and uh, they know that you know you have only one life to live. So therefore they have been uh, expressing themselves and that mindset change is allowing these uh, consumers to get into more and more uh, newer technologies, newer products and even the luxury car market. That's, that's the long and short of it and I think if this trend continues, this, this thinking way continues, I think the trend is uh, here to stay. So, uh, in this uh, financial year, are you planning to make any more investment or are you planning to add more capacity to the production? We are planning to add more capacity to the consumer uh, 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 touch points. So we have grown from uh, four uh, touch points in uh, four cities, uh, which was at the beginning of 2022 last year. Uh, by the end of 2022, we are at 17 outlets in um, uh, 13 cities. So that was a major change point. And in addition to that, uh, we want to continue this journey because I think uh, consumer demand is coming from BNC townships. The growth rate is much faster there, so therefore we need to be there. After the E6 and the Atto 3, Chinese automotive giant BYD is all set to launch the all-electric premium sedan in India, the BYD Seal. This has a battery pack of 82 kilowatt hour and can give a range of over 700 kilometers. We caught up with the company's management and asked them about plans to increase the sales footprint in India and also how the India-China tensions are impacting their operations. So I think after, you know, demonstrating two technologies in India, the Blade Battery and the e-platform, uh, this car, the new car, the premium sedan, we are going to demonstrate another new technology which is called the cell-to-body technology. So this comes equipped with the blade battery, the e-platform, and then it comes equipped with the cell-to-body technology. Right. So the speciality is that we have sandwiched the battery into the chassis. Yeah. There the battery was integrated into the platform. Here we have actually sandwiched into the chassis. 
giving the car more safe, more torsional rigidity, and as safe as you can in this sedan. In our home country, <clears throat> within a span of 47, 45 minutes after booking, we got almost close to 50,000 orders. So 50,000 orders for this car so far? Yeah, globally. Uh, we see a lot of Chinese investors, Chinese companies uh, having issues in India because of the tensions between India and China. How do you see that play out and what has been your uh, message to policymakers? See, I think as a company, we are projecting ourselves, which I've been telling as a global company, as a technology company. So, you know, uh, keeping aside the political situations, we work on the business side. So I think that is what we're looking at. We want to satisfy the customer. We don't, customers don't face any problems in spare parts and, you know, servicing. That's why we are pruning up our dealers, training our dealers. So I think <clears throat> as a company, uh, we want to be in India, we want to be a part of the <clears throat> electric revolution which is happening in India and we want to contribute to the greener environment for the country. Auto Expo 2023 also saw launches and unveils by several electric vehicle startups like Matter, which recently launched its uh, range of electric motorcycles in India. My colleague Danish Anand visited the stalls of Ultraviolet and also a new EV startup called Liger. Take a look at his reports. Well, after launching its first product, the F77 Ultraviolet at the Auto Expo 2023 has given us a peek into its future. Well, yes, the company has officially announced that it will foray into the electric motorsports. And as you can see behind us, this is called the Ultraviolet F99, which is company's factory racing platform. And uh, the most striking feature about this bike is the power. As of today, what we've designed the technology for is to be sustainable over the next 20, 30 years. We are seeing that this in the last year, there was a lot of demand which was generated for electric two-wheelers. But as far as bikes are concerned and your particular segment is concerned, don't you think that it will cater to certain uh, kind of uh, audience and in order to capture a bigger and a wider market? Do you also plan to launch some low-based uh, products? which are not uh, racing specific, which are not sports specific, but for the common man, are you planning to have something like that? See, if, if you talk about common man, then I think the other aspect we should look at is owning an electric vehicle over five years. So mm -hmm. while one might say that we are starting out at a price point of uh, 3.8 lakhs, right? But compared to an IC engine vehicle, mm -hmm. any 200cc vehicle and above, your monthly operating costs are between four to 5,000 per month on petrol. Your annual service costs are anywhere from 10 to 15,000. Over five years, this maintenance cost of an IC engine vehicle is three and a half, three to 3.5 lakhs. Now, compared to what we've created, that five-year annual ownership cost is less than 50,000 rupees, right? So now, if you look at that whole thing, we've already disrupted that space of what what the price point represents over my usage or ownership of an electric vehicle. Well, everyone loves riding a scooter, but there are certain people that do not drive the scooter themselves because they fear that they might just fall off. But look no more, because one of India's Mumbai-based startup, Liger Mobility, has launched what the company is claiming, the world's first auto-balancing scooter. And as you can see, this particular person is static right now. The scooter is static right now. But the scooter is not getting disbalanced and neither the rider is falling off. Why? Because this scooter is powered by an AI which takes care of the external as well as of the internal environment. And as soon as the scooter is static or it is in the speed limit of 5 to 7 kilometers, the AI kicks in and it balances off the scooter and no one just falls off. And let me remind you, it is only at the speed of 5 to 7 kilometers per hour, the, the auto balancing mode of the scooter will kick in, but not if you are at a higher speed than that. Well, uh, this is one of the innovations that this company has showcased at the Auto Expo 2023. Now, the big question is how the scooter lovers would love to buy the scooter or not. With you journalist Sudhir Patra, this is Danish Anand from, with CNBC TV 18. That's all we have time for on this special broadcast from day two of the Auto Expo. From Danish and me, thank you for watching and goodbye.